we've got several scriptures I want to do today. This is, we've, we've reviewed all of these before, Romans 20 and 9. They were what? Filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness. Hey, hey, let, let, let me say the word so everybody can kind of stay with us, okay? I appreciate you being knowing it so well. It really blesses me. But let's, all right, covetousness, malice, they were full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips. And then they're gossips on steroids. What's this one? You remember? People who, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful. Remember that one? Inventors of evil. Not dishonor. Disobedient to parents. Foolish. They can't, faithless. yeah, faithless, heartless. heartless, ruthless. Very good, very good. And then he closes that chapter by saying this, though they know God's, do you remember this? I said this word right here, righteous decree. Very good. That those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but they give not honor. Accept it. Approval is the word. Yeah, approval. So. Though they know God's righteous degree, they know what God's commanded. They know these things are wrong. They know that people who practice those things deserve to die. God says the wages of sin is death. They not only do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. They say, that's okay. Just do whatever you want to do. You be your own boss. You decide what's right for you. Don't worry about it. It's fine. You're fine. And God says, no, you're not. If you'll disobey me, that's sin. And we must not give approval to those who sin. So we looked at that last time. Now, we worked in, as we worked through Romans 1, uh, some verses from Psalm 100. I want to look at that again today, too. So we've done these already. Make a what? Joyful noise. noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Very good. So he's telling us we need to learn to make a joyful noise. Oh, we talked about this before. I think I may have shared it with you, but I was raised at First Baptist Church in Teleco Plains. Uh, and, you know, it, East Telco Plains, a little tiny East Tennessee town, you'd think would be pretty loose. But at First Baptist, we considered ourselves a little, little respectable. You know what I mean? So we didn't make a joyful noise to the Lord. We were kind of quiet. There are a lot of churches that have this attitude. They think, well, uh, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. And they, they, they focus on silence. But God often focuses on celebration and and, and shouting even, making a joyful noise, and serving the Lord with gladness, coming before his presence with singing. So now I worship very differently when I was young. I mean, I'm all the time saying, thank you, Lord, and thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah, and amen, and praise the Lord. You know, that's just making a joyful noise and being glad, thinking about all the good things he's done. We think about what he's like and what he's done. It should get us excited. The next verse we also did, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the Something of his something. You remember this? He's the great shepherd. We're the sheep of his pasture. Very good. And so we talked about this. Uh, it's, it's part of worshiping and praising and realizing you're the one that made me, God. I didn't make myself. I didn't come out of the slime. You made me. And I didn't make myself. And I'm yours. And I'm your sheep, which means I'm pretty dumb. But you're the great shepherd. You know how to take care of your sheep. You know how to provide for me. You know how to protect me. You know how to lead me. So, so it's a powerful praise psalm. All right, here's today's verse. Enter into his gates with uh, yeah. Very common word though. You know this word. Enter his gates with <laughs> uh let me see if I can give another hint. The second letter is an H. Um th th this goes with praise. Praise and worship, and that's really the th Thanks. What's the longer version? Yeah, but what's what do we call the holiday? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yep. And into his courts with praise. praise. And then this goes together. Be be thankful unto him and bless his name. Very good. So he's saying, just remember all the great things I've done for you. Give me thanks. Here's where we here's where we tend to be, guys. Many things in life don't go our way. Many times we're unhappy. With circumstances, right? We don't like it. We want things to change. And if we're not careful, we'll focus on that so much that we'll forget to be thankful. And so even when things aren't going well, God wants to say, Lord, 
thank you. You've done a lot of good things for me. I'd love you to fix this problem, but Lord, I know I need to be thankful. So I want to have a thankful heart no matter what. No matter how bad things seem to be, I want to have a thankful heart. I mean, you know, he's given us so many things. So we need to be, I'll, I'll, I'll pray some words of thanksgiving in just a minute, but we need to be giving him thanks all the time. He's done so much for us. And uh, and bless his name. And in his course with praise, it's, just, it's recognizing how great he is. Okay, let's see if we memorize this. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise, and into his courts with praise, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, be thankful unto him, be thankful unto him, and bless his name, and bless his name, and bless his name. Can we do it? Very good. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful. Be thankful. I didn't spend enough time on that, did it? Be thankful. Yeah, unto him. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, anything you want to say before I pray? Everybody ready to pray? Thanks, Father, for loving us. Thank you for this opportunity. Lord, you told us here to, to, to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and your course with praise and be thankful to you because, Lord, you've given us so much, so many blessings. And even what we're doing right now, what a privilege it is to be able to talk to you like this anytime, day or night. And thank you so much that we're in a Christian school where we can do what we're doing right now. Lord, we know there are a lot of Christian teachers out there in the public schools who can't do this with their kids. Uh, it seems a shame and ridiculous, but they can't. But I thank you that we do and we can. And so thank you for that blessing. Lord, we also want to thank you for uh, where we live and all the blessings that go with it. Lord, we know that that uh, you've given us so many good things. Uh, you've given us comfortable clothes to wear and comfortable shoes to wear. And when it's cold outside, warm places to be. Thank you for warm beds to sleep in. Thank you for hot showers. Thank you for good food that we get to eat all the time. Lord, lots of good food. Thank you for friends and family members who love us and care about us that we get to have in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for places where we can go worship you in our churches. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be afraid. During the night, we weren't worried last night that somebody crash down our door and come in and arrest us and take us to jail or worse. Lord, we know that uh, we didn't worry about somebody taking off our parents and shooting them or or uh, tearing down our church or burning down our churches. Lord, we, we thank you that we know that we have brothers and sisters all around the world who are enduring this horrible, horrible persecution. And we pray for them, Lord. We know some of them are dying because of their faith in Jesus. And some of them are losing their jobs because of their faith in Jesus. And some of them are losing their homes because of their faith in Jesus. And Lord, I pray you'd encourage them and help us to realize what an incredible blessing we have here where we live. So thank you. And please bless our brothers and sisters around the world. And uh, and then Lord, of course, the spiritual blessings you give us. It's amazing. Lord, we get to be your kids because of what Jesus did for us. Thank you for that. Thank you that our sins are forgiven and washed away because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that that you've given us eternal life because of Jesus. And we're never going to really die. We're going to be with you forever. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for the fact that uh, uh, that you're meeting all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we can just go on and on and on thanking you for the incredible blessings you send our way. So help us to not forget these things. Lord, especially, you know us, Lord, when we... When we get heavy, when we have things not going our way, and we tend to get focused on that, and we tend to forget all the many blessings you've sent our way. So help us to be thankful all the time, even when things are kind of rough. And I, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to focus on you. Help us to bless others, too. Help us to represent you well to others. I pray you'd help us to walk with you and be more like Jesus and, and help us to learn. Lord, help these kids to learn what they need to learn today so they can do well on the test. Uh, next time pray you bless them and help them to focus and work hard on this stuff and learn as much as they can but thank you lord for loving us so much thank you most of all for jesus we pray in his name amen all right well we started reviewing for the test last time i gave you a handout last time and uh we'll continue on with that today Um, okay, now now we may, well, we'll have time, I think, today to go back and review some of the ones we've already done. 
But that video is already up. It should be. I'll double check, but it should be. And, to, and so today's video will be added to the girls with me. Okay. What? I'm sorry. This will be number nine, won't it? I believe it's a test number nine coming up. Yep. Yep. So this says the rectangle is 24 inches long and 18 inches wide. You know what I usually do when I see a question like this, what I first do, what I do first? When I see something talks about a rectangle, I draw it. Yep, I draw it. I do. You don't have to draw it this time if you read the rest of it, but almost all, always I'll draw it. But it says, what's the ratio? You got to know what that means of length to width. The length is 24, the width is 18, and you can write the ratio like that. You can also write it like this. You can also write it like this. There's several ways to write ratios. Most of the time in math, we will wind up using this because that's, we can work with fractions better than we can work with these things, but I wouldn't count any of these wrong if that was a test question. Also, I need to tell you, I, I probably tell you this often, but and on the test, if it asks for the ratio and doesn't ask you to reduce it, I'll accept this is correct. It is correct. It's just not reduced. But most of the time, they'll reduce it. Six goes to 24 four times. Six goes to 18 three times. So it's four thirds. And the reason I like to point that out is someday you may be taking a lot of multiple choice tests. And here they're not multiple choice. The ACT is multiple choice. If this were a question on the ACT, they would probably reduce it. They wouldn't leave it like that, most likely. So it's good for you to be aware of the fact that you can reduce it, but you don't have to reduce it as long as you get it right. So length to width, I don't get them backwards. They gave the length first and the width second, so it's 24 to 18. Okay. Now, if at any point here you need to stop me and ask me to do something again, I will. Just let me know. Where I'm going back. Oh. back here. All right, look at this one. Got to know what these words mean. Lakeisha's test scores were 90, 95, 90, 85, 80, 85, 90, 80, 95, 100. What was her mean? And then it says the word average. What's the difference in these words right here? It's a trick question. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, they mean the same thing. When you see the word mean in a math problem, it means average. That's why they put the word average in parentheses. These mean the same thing. So find the average. How do you do it, guys? Does everybody understand that? Add them all up and divide by however many numbers there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. But you're going to have to add them. So you got 90. Now, there's several ways to do this, but I'm just going to stack them up here. 90, 95, 90, 85, uh, 80, 85. 90, 80, 95, and 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Make sure you got them all right. Before you start adding, just double check and make sure you've written it and everything correctly. All right, the right column is, they made it fairly easy. The right column is all fives 5, 10, 15, 20. So I carry the two. Now you can add that. This is going to be the hard part, but you can add it just straight down the list. Just add them up till you get to the end. But I'll tell you what I'd do. See if this makes sense to you. These are all nines and eights. So I got one, two, three, four, five nines. That's 45. And I've got one, two, three, four eights. That's 32. And 32 and 45 is 77. And then I've got this two I had to carry here, which is 79. So that is just 79, carry the 7, 71 is 8. You don't have to do it that way. If you say, that doesn't make sense to me, result, we'll just add 2 and 9 is 11, 9 more makes 20, 9 more makes 29, 8 more makes 37. You know, just go down through and add them up. Just be careful. It's easy to make a careless mistake. You get 890. Now, am I done? Is the answer 890? No, that's the total. You got to divide by 10. But you know what 890 divided by 10 is, don't you? It's 89. Yeah. 89, you can do that in your head. Okay. Now, I'm not sure we've talked about medians in here, but we need to talk about it a minute because there was one on the test like that. 
not sure how that popped in there. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you about medians real quickly. Median means middle. You know, you know, if you go down a divided highway, there's a median in the middle. There's lanes over here and lanes over here going different directions. In the middle, there's something called a median. Medians in the middle. Now, guys, listen very carefully. To find the median, you have to put the numbers in the correct order. You don't just find the one in the middle here the way they're bunched up here because they're, they're not in order. Now, listen, stay with me. Watch me closely. The smallest number up there is a what? 80. 80. That's where I'm going to start. Now, you got to be careful. The next number I'm going to put down is 80 again because there are two of them. Now, so you got to be really careful. I would suggest you cr scratch them out. You know, they're two 80s. Now, the next number I'm going to put is 85. Yeah, and there's one here. And then there's another one over there. So I put down two of them. Three 90s. Three 90s. You see them? 90, 90, 90. Just be very careful. 90, 90, 90 and 90. And then there's a 95 here and a 95 here. So the two 95s. And then 100 at the end. Okay. Yeah, you're getting ahead of me, Thomas. You're doing good. But, but everybody else just stay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you can think ahead, Thomas. That's good stuff. Now, guys, listen to me carefully. I'm, I'm looking for the median here. So I had to arrange them. 80, 80, 85, 85, 90, 90, 90, 95, 95, 100. They've got to go from lowest to highest. You got to be arranged. And then make sure you got them all in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they're all there. I mean, I double checked it. Now, you got to find the one in the middle. When there's a lot of numbers like this, you, here's a good way to do it scratch off the ones on the end, and then scratch off the next one, and then scratch off the next one, and then scratch off the next one. And you're left with these two. If those two are different, that's exactly right. If they're different, you find the average of them. If one was 90 and the other was 80, you'd have to do an 85. Find the one in the middle. But they're both 90. Sometimes there's only one. You know, if there's an odd number, so there'll just be one. But the one in the middle or the ones in the middle are the median. And so it is 90. Okay. Got it? Does that make sense? Everybody following me there? Okay. So there'll be at least one question where they ask you to find the median. Okay. Median is actually easier, I think, than mean because with mean, you have to add them all up and do the division. Median, you just kind of don't have to do so much math. You just have to be sure they're all in the right order and you didn't leave anything out. All right. Five, six of the 300 runners finished the marathon. Five, six. What does the word of mean? Multiply five six times three hundred. Five six times three hundred. Well, six goes into three hundred fifty times, and five times fifty is two hundred fifty. Now, be careful, guys. The question is, how many runners did not? Don't miss that word. Finish the marathon. Yeah. If there were 300 in all and 250 finished it, then 50 did not. 50. Yeah, the ratio of runners who finished the marathon to runners who did not finish the marathon. Okay, 250 finished. That's what we calculated the first. 50 did not finish. So finished 250 to not finish would be 250 to 50. I would count that correct. I would count this correct. You could write the word two in there if you wanted to, 250 to 50. And again, if you were on a multiple choice test, they'd probably reduce this because 50 goes to both of those, five on top and one on the bottom, five to one. So you ought to know that you can get that from it, but I'm okay with, with any of that unless they tell you to reduce it. Then you got to reduce it. Okay. Some teachers will tell you always reduce it and they won't count it right if you don't reduce it all the time. Watch out for that. But I'll count it right if they don't ask you to reduce it because it's still correct even if it's not reduced. This is a tough little problem. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you just a little bit of algebra here. But, but before I do, for most of you, what you're going to do is say, well, I'm going to either add or subtract, right? You're, you know you're going to add or subtract. And if you add 0.1 to 1, 
one, one, one point one. And if you subtract one minus one point one, if Z is one, that's not going to be right because this is a bigger number. It's going to be give you something negative. So that's that's not right. Not that's not point one. One minus one point one. So 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 I'm going to yeah I'm going to subtract one minus the zero point one. Put your decimal there, and you get zero point nine. Yeah, that's good. Now, here's what you can do when you get this. Check it. 1 minus 0 0.9. Put your decimal there. You know, 1 here and you get 1, 0 0.1. When you add 0 0.9 and 0 0.1, you get 1. But Z is 0 0.9. That's what you have to subtract from 1 to get 0 0.1. So if you can't get if you get confused about whether you add or subtract, try both of them and see if either of them makes sense. Because one of them won't make sense. One of them adding will make it too big. Now let me show you something. You don't have to. You don't have to do this. If you're pretty good at math and you feel like this, you might want to learn this. Just, just watch me here for a minute. But you don't have to do this. Later on, what you're going to learn is this minus c. You can add a z to both sides. And you'll get 0 0.1 plus C over here equals 1 because this cancels out. Negative Z and positive Z cancel each other out. And then you can subtract the point 0.1 from both sides. And this cancels out. And so C equals 0 0.9 when you subtract that from 1. So that's that's the, that's the way you'll do it in algebra. Yep, 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 yep. There's nothing wrong with that. If you learned it last year, that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Perimeter of the rectangle is 48. What's its width? Okay. If there's 16 down here, what's this? It's going to be 16. It's a rectangle, so the length's going to be the same on both sides. The whole perimeter is 48. Yep. Okay. All right. So you got 16 plus 16. That's 32. That's this, this length and this length. And the whole perimeter, well, you got track 32 from 48, and you got 16 left. But that's not one of these. That's both of them added together. So since they're the same, they must both be 8. So I added up these two. That 32, and subtracted that from 48, which means I needed 16 more inches or centimeters or whatever it is. And I know they're both the same, so it has to be 8 and 8. That's half of 16. Now you can check that by adding them all up. 16 plus 16 is 32, plus 8 is 40, plus 8 more is 48. It works. Yeah. Always check your And guys, do this work on a test on scratch paper. Don't try to do it all on the test paper. Give yourself room because it's easy to make careless mistakes. Here's a tally sheet. You know how that works? How many votes right here? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the five, ten, fifteen, sixteen there. Five, ten, fourteen here. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-two here. Five, ten, fifteen, eighteen there. Okay, so you might want to do that first. The winner received how many more votes than the runner-up? Yeah, 22 is the winner. 18 is the runner-up. 22 minus 18 is 4. What fractions of the votes did Carlos receive? All right, Carlos got 14 out of how many? Okay, all right. When you add these all up, now look, 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 guys. There's a 6 and a 4 here, which makes 10, and an 8 and a 2 here, which makes 10. So if you put them in groups like this, 16 and 14 is 30, 22 and 18 is 40, so that is with 70. This is not, not the only way to do it. You can just add them up straight. That's fine. You'll still get 70, but that might make it easier for you. 14 out of 70. That's the fraction of the votes Carlin received. Now, the fact is, 7 goes into both of those, 2 and 10, and then 2 goes to both of those, 1 and 5. So it could be reduced to one-fifth of the votes. If it were a multiple choice test, that would probably be the answer that would be given, but I'm fine with 14 out of 70. Everybody okay with that? If you're not, I'll be glad to repeat things. I don't mind.
good things more than what you. Uh, four sevens of those who rose the, rode the giant gyro, or how you pronounce that, affair, were euphoric. All the rest were vertiginous. What fraction of the riders were vertiginous? Do you need to know what vertiginous means to solve this problem? No. I think it means dizzy, but anyway. Uh, what was the ratio of report to vertiginous? What fraction were vertiginous? All right. So this time they don't give us a number. We don't have to do the multiplication. That's not that's not a big deal. But four sevenths of them were euphoric. So what fraction were vertiginous? Well, how many are there in all? Yeah, seven sevenths in all minus four sevenths would be three sevenths, right? This is the total, seven sevenths. If they'd given sixth or fifths or fourth, it would be six sixths or fifth fifths or whatever. Yeah. So it's three sevenths is, is the answer to this one. What fraction of vertiginous? Three sevenths. And then what was the ratio of euphoric to vertiginous? Yeah, it's it's four out of seven to three out of seven, which would be four to three. If you said four sevenths to three sevenths, I would count that right. Let me let me just show you something here. Stay with me, watch this. Make sure you watch the math. This this means four sevenths divided by three sevenths, remember? And that means four sevenths divided by three sevenths, which means four sevenths times seven thirds. You got to multiply by the reciprocal. Sevens cancel and you get four thirds, four thirds, four thirds. But I would not count this wrong if you if you got an answer like that. Okay. Four to three. All right. You remember what this is called? Starts with a P. You might remember. Um, you don't have to remember as long as you know how to work it. But work. it's called a proportion. Proportion. When you got a fraction on this side, just a fraction. That's all. And a fraction on the other side, just a fraction. That's all. And they're equal to each other. They're called proportions. It's like this ratio equals that ratio. Okay. Uh, Usually we work proportions by cross multiplying, but but let me tell you something. I, yeah, tell me what you see if you can remember this. What would I do first here before I did the cross multiplying? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would reduce that fraction over there. I would reduce that fraction. I know that twenty five over one hundred can be reduced. This I can't reduce because it's got a variable on the bottom. But twenty five goes into both of these one and four, right? You don't have to reduce it. It'll give you the right answer if you don't reduce it. But it's a lot easier to work with one fourth than it is twenty five hundredths when you're multiplying or dividing. You see what I'm saying? So if you if you notice that something can be reduced, reduce it, and make it easier. And w times one is w, and three times four is twelve, and that's the answer. That's all right. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I don't I don't care if you do it a different way. As, as long as you know what you're doing and you get the right answer, you're good. And and you're right. Okay, am I good? All right, you gotta buy divide by a decimal divisor. Point one two. That's the divisor over there. 0 0.096. Don't get those in the wrong order. That's the divisor. You remember the first step? Move this one all the way to the right. One, two places in this case, but it has to move all the way to the right. Yeah, the same number of places. Since I moved this one two, I moved this one two. One, two. So it goes right there. And then you move it up here and you divide. Now, guys, for some of you, when you've Move the decimal around like that, it may look confusing. So you can rewrite the problem if you want to. This is 12 now, and this is 9.6 now. Just divide. Yeah, this is zero, of course, and 8 times 12 is 96. And that's the answer. So let me say it again. The divisor, you move the decimal all the way to the right. Could be one, two, three places. You move it all the way to the right. And however many places you move it, 
you move this one the same number of places. Don't move this one all the way to the right. If you move this one place, move this one place. If you move this two places, move this two places. If you move this three places, move that three places. And then put your decimal right above the decimal once you've moved it. And then just divide like you always divide. Very good. All right. What's that? I don't remember. What are you going to do first to solve this one, guys? Change it to what? Improper fractions. 5 times 6 is 30, and 3 is 33 over 5. Now, you know you're going to have to change the multiplication to division, but don't do that yet. Get them, get them improper first. 10 times 1 is 10, and 1 is 11. Make sure you check yourself. Don't make a careless mistake. 30 and 3 is 33. 10 and 1 is 11. Now, the next step is... No, no, you're you're going to divide. You're going to divide fractions. And when you divide fractions, you leave this one the same. Change that to multiplication. Yeah. You can say lead, change, flip if you want to. But you do, to divide by fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. By the reciprocal. This one stays the same. This one flips over. The denominator goes up top. The numerator comes down the bottom. Now you can cancel. 5 goes into 5 and 10, 11 goes into 11 and 33. So you got 6 over 1, which is 6. Big brain. Is that what you said? Yep. Good. Right over here. All right. 33 fifths. 5 times 6 is 30 and 3 is 33 fifths. 10 times 1 is 10 and 1 is 11 tenths. Then change this to multiplication and flip the second one and cancel. Got it. All right. Is that the last one? Now, guys, look at your handouts. We've got plenty of time here. And let's review a little bit of what we did last time. Is there one of them in there on the last one that we did before that you'd like to do again? Nine, I'm going to do one or two whether you like it or not. You want to pick one out or you want me to? Why? Wow. That's where we are. Let's do it. Well, guys, this is a good one. You need to remember some things. What do you have to remember? You know how many degrees in a triangle? Yeah. In, let's say triangle. That's 180 degrees. No matter what the triangle is, any triangle, got three angles, and they always add up to 180. Always, always, always. How much is this angle right here? 90. When you see that little square in the corner, it means it's a 90 degree angle. Yeah, these two. Add up to 90 plus 42, which is 132. Does that mean that's 132? Is X 132? No. Yeah, these all three have to add up to 180. So you got 132 right here. 48 degrees. This is 48. Now, guys. If you get something different than 48, listen to me. Add them up and see if they add up to 180. If they don't, you made a mistake. These three angles have to add up to 180. 48. Yeah, do you remember this? Anytime you got two lines crossing each other, these angles are called vertical angles. Those angles are equal, and these angles are equal. They're always always equal. So Z's got to be the same as, 40, as 48, is X. Now, there's one other thing you have to remember. You remember how many degrees there are in a straight line? 180. 180, 180 degrees, just like a triangle. They're both 180. Just get over here. So it's, it's 192. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 180 minus 48. Yeah, that's right. You said 42. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole thing is 180. So this has to be 132 so that these two will add up to 180. Yep, yep. Yep. That's good. So we did that one before, but that's a tricky problem. I'll tell you another one I think is kind of tricky that I probably ought to do one more time for you, unless you want to pick one out. What? Page four? I'm, I'm, what page is it on? Do you know? Can you figure that out? Oh, right here. Seven nines of 450? Yeah. All right. 
seven ninths of 450. All means times seven ninths, seven ninths times 150. And nine goes into 450, 50 times, and seven times 50 is 350. 350 people were enthralled. How many were enthralled? Well, that's what that's what we found. 350. How many were not enthralled? It's just the rest of them. 100, 450 minus 350. There were 450 in all. 350 were enthralled. The rest of them, 100 were not. Make sense? Yeah. Read your words real carefully. Make sure they don't have the word not or something like that in there. Um, how about this one? Let's do this one again. According to the vertices of the triangle. Negative six, zero, zero, negative six, and zero, zero. I need six tick marks because six, there's no number bigger than six. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six. Now listen very carefully. The first one is always X. First one's always X. Listen to me. X tells you how far to the right you're going. If it's positive, you're going to the right. If it's negative, you're going to the left. So all the numbers out here are positive on the x-axis. All the numbers out here are negative on the x-axis. That's a negative six. So I'm going back one, two, three, four, five, six to here. And then y is zero, so I don't go up and I don't go down. Y, if it's positive, you're going up. If it's negative, you're going down. It's zero, so you're staying right there on the x-axis. So there's the first one, negative six and zero. X is six units to the left. Y is not going up or down. Zero negative six means X is zero. This time you don't move right or left. You stay right there. But you go down six because Y, when it's negative, you go down. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's Y is negative six. Zero, X is zero. You're not going right or left. Negative six, you're going down six. And finally, they give you zero, zero, which is right there at the origin. Don't go to the right or left, and you don't go up or down. You stay right there. And there's your triangle. Here to here to here. Whoa, 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 whoa. The area of a triangle, you gotta remember this formula, is a half the base times height. Yeah. And this is the right here, this is the base, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. From this point to this point is six units. See it? And from this point to this point, six units. So it's a half times six times six, which is three times six, which is eighteen. That's the area. Don't forget the half. Area of a triangle. All right. Um, got it? Anybody want to do it again? Got it? Okay. Any other problems that look at you and you say, well, you remember what probability means? Yeah. Is it a, how many times out of? Yeah, it's a fraction. What's on top? The how many times you stand. Yep. And what's on the bottom? Total, yeah. The number of ways you can get it over the total possible outcomes. And if you're rolling a die, there's six to six outcomes, right? There's six faces. The composite number, we talked about this the other day, you got to know what a composite number is. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's prime, that's prime, and that's prime, and one's not either one. So the only two that are composite are four and six, so it's two out of six. Yep, two's the only, only even number that's prime. That's right. Okay. Any more? Let's see. We've done several of those. When you want to write this as a decimal, do you have to change this? Keep that. Keep that the same. You don't need to change that. Two fifths is what you need to change to a decimal. Five divided into two. This is the divisor down here. You get four. So it's just 2.4. Don't lose the two, but you don't have to change the two. Eight goes into one. One, two, five. Just divide. All there is to it. Leave it as a decimal. All right. Um, 
Oh, we've done quite a bit of review this time. Let's see. You want to round this to the thousands? You're going to first write four, five, four, five, four, five a few times. This is the thousands place. This is tenths. This is hundreds. Five. Yeah, that means you go up. The five is big enough to make that go up to a five. So four, four, five, five. This one, thousands would be right here, so I don't have to write it all out again. Eight tells me it goes up. 3.143. Okay. All right. Uh, we did all these the other day. By the way, you've got two videos now that will cover this whole thing. You know, we started the other day. What would you do to this one first? All have to be improper fractions. 16 fifths, 21 eighths, 10 sevenths. Yeah. Do what's in parentheses first, subtract those. You got a common denominator? Yeah. Stack one. Yep. Yeah. Subtract. Mm hmm. Okay. Do you have any other questions? All right, you got that video and this video. If, if Remember, if one of the videos don't work, sometimes I have trouble getting all the videos to work. But the other class, we cover the same stuff. You know, it's all right there. So you can watch the other class. Okay. Ready? Ready to stop? Okay, Father, thank you for these kids. Thank you for the way they worked hard today. I pray you'd bless them for that. I pray that any of them that's still a little bit confused about some of these problems, help them between now and Thursday to get that confusion separated out and worked out so they got know how to do these things. And I pray you bless them on Thursday and help them do well on the test. But help them spend the time they need, Lord, to make sure they're really, really ready. Help them to work hard. Uh, help us the rest of this day to glorify you, to walk with you, to bless you, and bless others too. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.